Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, February 24th, 2024. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Our psalm for today is Psalm 31. Psalm 31, for the choir director, a psalm of David. Lord, I seek refuge in you. Let me never be disgraced. Save me by your righteousness. Listen closely to me. Rescue me quickly. Be a rock of refuge for me, a mountain fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. You lead and guide me for your name's sake. You will free me from the net that is secretly set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I entrust my spirit. You have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I hate those who are devoted to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in your faithful love because you have seen my affliction. You know the troubles of my soul and have not handed me over to the enemy. You have set my feet in a spacious place. Be gracious to me, Lord, because I am in distress. My eyes are worn out from frustration, my whole being as well. Indeed, my life is consumed with grief and my years with groaning. My strength has failed because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. I am ridiculed by all my adversaries and even by my neighbors. I am dreaded by my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street run from me. I am forgotten, gone from memory, like a dead person, like broken pottery. I have heard the gossip of many. Terror is on every side. When they conspired against me, they plotted to take my life. But I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. The course of my life is in your power. Rescue me from the power of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servant. Save me by your faithful love. Lord, do not let me be disgraced when I call on you. Let the wicked be disgraced. Let them be quiet in Sheol. Let lying lips that arrogantly speak against the righteous and proud contempt be silenced. How great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you. In the presence of everyone, you have acted for those who take refuge in you. You hide them in the protection of your presence. You conceal them in a shelter from human schemes, from quarrelsome tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his faithful love to me in a city under siege. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. But you heard the sound of my pleading when I cried to you for help. Love the Lord, all his faithful ones. The Lord protects the loyal, but fully repair, pays the arrogant. Be strong and let your heart be courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. Years have now passed since the Lord first gave Abram the promise that he would have a child. And now Abram is beginning to wonder whether that promise will actually come true. In fact, as far as he can see, the only way he can have a son is by adopting, legally adopting his servant, Eliezer. But the Lord comes to Abram and repeats his promise and assures him that he will have a son. God will keep his promise. After these events, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. But Abram said, Lord God, what can you give me since I am childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Abram continued, Look, you have given me no offspring, so a slave born in my house will be my heir. Now the word of the Lord came to him. This one will not be your heir. Instead, one who comes from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, 
look at the sky and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, your offspring will be that numerous. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him for as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, Lord God, how can I know that I will possess it? He said to him, bring me a three-year-old cow, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. So he brought all these to him, cut them in half, and laid the pieces opposite each other. But he did not cut the birds in half. Birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. As the sun was setting, a deep sleep came over Abram, and suddenly great terror and darkness descended on him. Then the Lord said to Abram, Know this for certain. Your offspring will be resident aliens for 400 years in a land that does not belong to them and will be enslaved and oppressed. However, I will judge the nation they serve, and afterward they will go out with many possessions. But you will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the fourth generation they will return here, for the iniquity of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. When the sun had set and it was dark, a smoking firepot and a flaming torch appeared and passed between the divided animals. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, I give this land to your offspring, from the brook of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates River, the land of the Kenites, Kenizzites, Cadmonites, Hethites, Perizzites, Rephaim, Amorites, Canaanites, Girgashites, and Jebusites. You probably have noticed that Mark's gospel is an action-packed gospel. And so as we continue in this very action-packed gospel, we're going to see Jesus performing more pretty amazing miracles. Today, he is going to heal a woman who had been subject to bleeding for years and raise a young girl from the dead. When Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the sea. One of the synagogue leaders, named Jairus, came and when he saw Jesus, fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, My little daughter is dying. Come and lay your hands on her so that she can get well and live. So Jesus went with him, and a large crowd was following and pressing against him. Now a woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years had endured much under many doctors. She had spent everything she had and was not helped at all. On the contrary, she became worse. Having heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothing. For she said, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be made well. Instantly, her flow of blood ceased and she sensed in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Immediately, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing against you, and yet you say, Who touched me? But he was looking around to see who had done this. The woman, with fear and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be healed from your affliction. While he was still speaking, people came from the synagogue leader's house and said, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? When Jesus overheard what was said, he told the synagogue leader, don't be afraid. Only believe. He did not let anyone accompany him except Peter, James, and John, James's brother. They came to the leader's house, and he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him, but he put them all outside. 
He took the child's father, mother, and those who were with him and entered the place where the child was. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl got up and began to walk. She was 12 years old. At this, they were utterly astonished. Then he gave them strict orders that no one should know about this and told them to give her something to eat. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.